are you still sending hydroxychloroquine to Brazil and other countries? Yeah, he's asked, he's asked for it, and we're sending it. Uh, well, I can't complain about it. I took it for two weeks, and I'm here. Here we are. And we've had some great studies. I didn't know about the report that Jeff asked about, uh, or the statement, but uh, we've had some great reports for coming out of France, coming out of Spain, coming out of other places. Uh, the only place we don't get necessarily reports are coming out of Alex's agency or wherever they come from. Uh, I don't understand that, Alex. What is it exactly? Uh, because I have he heard — I have had so many people that were uh, so thrilled with the results from hydroxy. So what is that exactly? Well, at, at your direction, uh, we continue to study, especially in earlier phase. So a lot of the data that has come out uh, that was more negative was people who were quite ill in the hospital. People that were, like, seriously yeah, ill. Yeah. Like, they weren't going to make it. Let's give them a little hydroxy, and then they don't make it. And they say, oh, wow, maybe the president was wrong. All I know is that we've had some tremendous reports. I've had a lot of people tell me that they think it saved their lives. You know the one <clears throat> woman who's a fantastic woman, the representative from Detroit, she, uh, she was fantastic, but I, there are many people like that that say the same thing. So, uh, I don't know, but I took it and I felt good about taking it. I don't know if it had an impact, but it certainly didn't hurt me. I feel, I feel good. <laughs> I feel Mr. good. Mr. President. Mr. President. Yeah. Uh, uh, the House Republicans today, they are asking you to re reverse your decision on terminating the relationship with the WHO. Would you consider that? I don't know. I have to see what they're asking. I have no idea what they're asking. It was after an investigation. I have, I have no idea what they're asking. But I'll take a look. I, the World Health Organization has been very disappointing. To the world, they've been disappointing. And we, as you know, paid $450 million and close to $500 million on some years. But for years and years, we paid far more than anybody else. And they've been a puppet of China. And so, no, I'm not reconsidering unless they get their act together. And I'm not sure they can at this point, but uh, maybe certainly over the years they might. But uh, they have been a disaster. They were wrong on every call, including when I said we're going to close up the United States to people coming in from China, where China was heavily infected at that time and uh, possibly still is. And I closed it, and that was a wise decision. There were a lot of people, even on the other side, the enemy, we'll call them the enemy, they said that was an incredible decision. I don't know how Trump made that decision, but he made that decision, and we saved thousands of lives, hundreds of thousands of lives. Yeah, go ahead. Mr. President, just on a separate issue. No, no. I apologize. Mr. President, can you say why you're suing John Bolton to prevent publishing his book? Well, I don't know. I'd have to ask the Attorney General, but I will say if he's doing a book, I think it's totally inappropriate that he does a book. I think uh, a guy, I gave him a break. Uh, he couldn't get Senate confirmed. He was never Senate confirmed the first time. I don't think he's supposed to even be calling himself an ambassador because he couldn't get Senate confirmed. He got in through a little trick, and uh, he was there for a fairly short period of time. Uh, I put him here because he couldn't get Senate confirmed. This was a non-Senate confirmed position, as you know. He stayed for a short while, and uh, I felt that uh, it was not appropriate that he stay any longer. I wasn't impressed. And uh, somebody said he went out and wrote a book. If he wrote a book, I can't imagine that he can, because that's highly classified information. Even conversations with me, uh, they're highly classified. I told that to the Attorney General before. I will consider every conversation with me as President highly classified. So that would mean that if he wrote a book, and if, it, if the book gets out, he's broken the law. And I would think that he would have criminal problems. I hope so. Otherwise, I mean, they put a sailor in jail because he sent a photograph of his bed and, a, and an engine of an old submarine. And if this guy's writing, uh, writing things about conversations or about anything, and maybe he's not telling the truth. He's been known not to tell the truth a lot. So we'll have to see what the book is all about. But, uh, you know, a lot of people are upset with him for writing a book. A lot of people are very angry with him for writing a book. But it's up to the Attorney General. Bill, do you have anything to say about it? <clears throat> Well, people who come to work in the government and have access to sensitive information generally sign a, an agreement that says that when they leave government, if they write something that, has a, that uh, draws on or, or might 
uh, reflect some of the information they've had access to, they have to go through a clearance process before they can publish the book. And uh, we don't believe that Bolton uh, went through that process, hasn't completed the process, and therefore uh, is in violation of that agreement. So what is the DOJ doing? And that's criminal liability, by the way, you're talking about. You're not talking about, like, he's got to return $3 that he made on a book. That's called criminal liability. That's a big thing. You know, Hillary Clinton, she deleted 33,000 emails. And uh, if we ever found out what those emails say, she would have had a liability. That's what you have. You have liability. Could the Attorney General tell us what the DOJ is doing in terms of the Bolton book? Well, there are a number of things, but the, the thing that is front and center right now is uh, trying to get him to complete the process, go through the process, and make the necessary uh, deletions of classified information. But the, but the book has been published. No, it hasn't. Yes, it's been published. It's just not released yet. Well, it's, it's being printed. It's being printed. Been According to sources, it's being printed. It hasn't been released. So are you going to court to try to stop? Well, I said what we were doing was try to get them to complete the, the clearance process that's required. His, his lawyer says that he thought that they had completed the process. Were there changes after that first iteration? Well, you, you know, he, he hasn't completed the process. He never completed the process. He knew that. This and is unprecedented, uh, really. Because I, I don't know of any book that's been published so quickly uh, while, you know, uh, the office holders are still in, in government and it's about very current events and current leaders and current discussions and current policy issues, which many of which are inherently classified. Have you read the book, sir? I have not read it. No. I haven't seen it. Mr. I Dan, haven't seen it. But he, he knows and he was advised uh, not to write it, and he was advised very strongly not to write it until it's cleared. And uh, he couldn't wait, and we'll see what happens. But I think he's got, personally, I would imagine he has, cr like, hey, uh, when you do classified, that to me is a very strong criminal problem. And he knows he's got classified information. Any conversation with me is classified. Then it becomes even worse if he lies about the conversation which I understand he might have in some cases. So we'll see what happens. Uh, they're in court, or they'll soon be in court. But he understands he did not complete a process, or anywhere near complete a process. On a separate foreign policy issue, sir, you faced a little bit of criticism from congressional Republicans, including uh, Representative Cheney, about your decision to withdraw troops from Germany. Are you reconsidering that at all? So we have 52,000 soldiers in Germany. It's a tremendous amount of soldiers. It's a uh, tremendous cost to the United States. And uh, Germany, as you know, is uh, very delinquent in their uh, payments to NATO. And they're paying 1 percent, and they're supposed to be a 2 percent, and the 2 percent is very low. It should be much more than that. So they're delinquent of uh, billions of dollars, and this is for years, delinquent. So we're removing uh, a number down to, we're putting the number down to 25,000 soldiers. We'll see what happens. But Germany has not been making payment. In addition to that, I was the one that brought it up. Everybody talks about Trump with Russia. Well, I brought this up a long time ago. Why is Germany paying Russia billions of dollars for energy, and then we're supposed to protect Germany from Russia? How does that work? It doesn't work. So Germany's delinquent. They've been delinquent for years, and they owe NATO billions of dollars, and they have to pay it. So we're protecting Germany, and they're delinquent. That doesn't make sense. So I said we're going to bring down the soldier count to 25,000 soldiers. Uh, it varies. It's around 52,000 now, but it varies. But it's a lot. And as you know, uh, those are well-paid soldiers. They live in Germany. They spend vast amounts of money in Germany. Everywhere around those bases is very prosperous for Germany. So Germany takes, and then on top of it, they treat us very badly on trade. We have a trade with the EU, and Germany being the biggest member, uh, very, very badly on trade. And we're negotiating with them on that. But right now, I'm not satisfied with the deal they want to make. Uh, they've cost the United States hundreds of billions of dollars over the years on trade. So we, we get hurt on trade, and we get hurt on NATO. Now, with NATO, I've raised other countries, $140 billion. They're paying $140 billion more 
because I interceded. I said, look, you know, we're protecting you. You have to pay your bills because it was going like this until I got here. Now it's gone like a rocket ship. But one of the only countries that hasn't agreed to pay what they're supposed to pay is Germany. So I said, until they pay, we're removing our soldiers, a number of our soldiers, by about half. And then when we get down to 25,000, we'll see where we're going. But Germany has been delinquent. And why should we be doing what we're doing if they don't pay? And they're supposed to pay. And the number they're supposed to pay, actually, at 2 percent, the 2 percent should be higher. And we're also talking about for many years. This isn't a new phenomena. This is going on for many years, where they've taken advantage of the United States. But everybody has, under Biden and under Obama, what they've done to this country is unbelievable. And I'm not only talking about Germany, by the way. I'm talking about plenty of other countries. But NATO now is paying $140 billion more. If you look at Secretary uh, — uh, the Secretary General, who's terrific, Stoltenberg, he's been terrific. He's probably my biggest fan. He said, nobody else could have done what Trump did, because I raised the other countries by $140 billion, because we end up paying the difference. The United States pays the difference to protect Europe. So we protect them, and then they take advantage of us on trade for many, many years. We're not talking about now, less so now, for many years. So we're working on a deal with them, but it's, uh, it's very unfair. And I would say, by far, the worst abuser is Germany. Mr. President, on Seattle, you said last week on Seattle that if the mayor of Seattle, the governor of Washington, didn't take steps to end the occupation of the Capitol Hill neighborhood, you would step in and you would do something. 100%. They, they still haven't ended it. They're negotiating. Are you considering yeah, taking action? You know, they're negotiating garbage removal. They're nego These people have taken over a vast part, a major part, a very good part, of a place called Seattle. Seattle's big stuff. That's a major city. And we have a governor who's a stiff, and we have a, a mayor who said, oh, this is going to be a love fest. And by the way, these are violent people that took it over. These are not people that are nice people. I saw her on your network today, John. I saw what went on with the hitting and the punching and the beating and all the other things going on in Seattle. And you have a governor that doesn't do a damn thing about it. And you have a mayor that doesn't know she's alive. She's talking about it's going to be a love fest this summer. Now, if they don't do the job, I'll do the job. And I've already spoken to the Attorney General about it. But if they don't do the job, we will do the job. What can you do? Uh, about 10 different things, either, any one of which will solve the problem quickly. Can we go through a whole list or a partial list? We don't have to go through any list. We can do a lot of things. Hey, Mr. President. I think it's incredible also that the radical left press doesn't cover it. They're acting like nothing happened. You turn on the news, you look at the news, you look — you don't even see stories about it. If the right ever took over a city, conservative Republicans took over a city, it would be the biggest story in history. You can't even find stories about Seattle. It's incredible. How much longer They've you taken have? over — we'll see. They've t I'll tell you what, the American public is very angered by that. Seattle is a major, important city. And the Democrats uh, — I guess you say radical left, but it's not even radical left. It's just Democrat. Where we have our problem are Democrat-run cities. If you look at Minneapolis, if you look at other cities that have had trouble, they're Democrat in virtually every case that I can think of. I can't think of one other case. These are Democrat-run cities. Minneapolis, where the police are told to run, run, run for your lives. Don't do anything. And if I didn't get involved and send in the National Guard, and it was at my insistence that they did that, and as soon as I did that, everything stopped in Minneapolis four there, days, five days is later. There a timeline that you're thinking here of Seattle? You know, there's no timeline. We're watching it very closely. These are violent people that are dealing violently. And I think what, would, what I'd like to see before we do something, I'd like to see the press get in and cover it, because they're not — it's not that they're covering it badly. They're hardly covering it all. Think of this. A group, Antifa and others, radical lefts, they went into a major U.S. city, Seattle, and they took over a big percentage of that city, and the press doesn't want to cover it. And we have a mayor who's scared stiff. She doesn't know what's happening. We have a governor that's one of the most overrated politicians in the country. He just ran for president. He got less than 1 percent. He actually probably 
I would have said less than zero, but I'm not sure that's possible. He got nothing. He got no votes, nothing. He, and the whole thing, the guy was out there fighting. At the end, he got zero, right? Zero. So he failed. And now he goes back, and they take over a city, and he doesn't say anything about it. Worse, he said he didn't hear it. A day later, he said, I never, I didn't hear anything about it. They took over a city, Seattle, and he said, I didn't hear anything about it. So look, the governor has to call out the troops, do what he has to do, has to call out the National Guard, uh, has to do something. Because, you know, the problem with what happened in Seattle is it spreads. And all of a sudden, they'll say, let's do some other city, and let's do another one. And we're not going to let it happen. So timing-wise, uh, hey, we're all set to go. We're watching the process. But the most amazing thing about the process is how the fake news media doesn't want to cover it. To me, that's the most amazing thing. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Saturday night will be a big night. That's a big night. I hope you're all going to be there. It's going to be very big. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining us and choosing us as your news source here at Golden State Times. If you guys liked our coverage, make sure you subscribe and you click that notification bell. There is going to be a White House press briefing tomorrow, so make sure that the bell is on so you can get notified when we go live for that event. But if you want to get notified 100% of the time when we go live for a live stream, then all you have to do is sign up to our text message notifications. If you want to sign up, the way to do it is by sending me a text message with the word Trump Live to the number 555-888. That number again is 555-888. So send Trump Live to the number 555-888. Also check out our website, goldenstatetimes.com. Again, that's www.goldenstatetimes.com and follow us on Twitter at Gold Stay Times. Thanks so much, folks. Please share this video on social media and let us know what you guys think in the comment section below.